An amazing event just finished in Oklahoma City. 128 players, $1,000 entry, 50,000, 25,000 for first and second, same payouts as the U.S. Open, but all limited to entrance rated 600 and under. Now, we're normally not a fan of events that exclude players or have a, a particular rating cutoff. On the other hand, John Barton, J.B. Case is, is involved here, um, and he's got so much energy and enthusiasm and passion for pool that we're normally a fan of anything he does. The extreme money involved here, though, brings up a question. Is this kind of event a magnet for sandbaggers? Players traveled from all over North America to come here. Is this basically a sandbaggers convention? So let's put our cynic hat on. Let's imagine that all or most of these players play better than 600 speed, and they each imagine that they're traveling to this event to rob it. Of course, when they get there, they're just playing other underrated players, so they don't necessarily rob the event. Now, the people who come out top four out of 128 in basically this sandbaggers convention, they must be really out there. They're going to be pro-level players who've manipulated their rating. If we could just dig in, we could figure that out. So, motivated by our inner cynic, let's switch to our rational hat. What are some things that we would find if these top finishers were the Mac Daddy sandbaggers? The first clue would come from the Calcutta. The top four finishers come one each from Arizona, Oklahoma, Illinois, and Virginia. Now three of these players are probably unknown to most of the players in Oklahoma where the tournament was. But they're not unknown in their home state. The player from Virginia, for example, other players in Virginia would know who that person gambles with even, who that person uh, gives or gets spots from. If that person was well known in his local stomping ground in Virginia for playing well over 600, then those people from that area would be bidding him up in the online Calcutta. The Tucson players would be bidding up the Arizona guy. Same thing with Illinois and Oklahoma. Were they? The median bid, uh, the middle bid, out of all 128 players, was $320. These four players, who once again finished in the top four spots, the average bid between them was 380 Calcuttas tend to bring out inside information. There was nothing to see here. Okay, let's, let's keep our rational hat on. And for the next few things, we'll combine the records of all four players together. Altogether, these players have more than 8,000 games in Fargo rate, and the performance for those 8,000 games is 585.5. Nothing surprising there. But if these are the mega sandbaggers we fear, the games that seem to matter less financially might be at a lower performance rating. So it's striking that there are more than 1,000 league games in the combined record here, and in fact, all four players have league games in the system, and the performance for those league games is 585.2. It's basically the same as the overall performance. These four have also occasionally played against top dogs, against players rated over 700. This would be major events or, or big regional events. We don't expect them to be on the stall there. And again, this is all four players. They've played a total of 258 games against these opponents. Of those 258 games, we could look at how many they would be expected to win collectively if they played at different levels. For instance, if they played at 660 speed, they'd expect be expected to win 98 of those 258 games, 640, 90 games, and so forth. These four players collectively won 70. They won 70. It's pretty much right where we expect them to be. In summary, all seems fine. The four players who finished at the top of this mega event uh, seem to be on the up and up. And importantly, if there was some big problem with sandbagging, there's 128 players in this event. The players who are on the up and up would not make it to the end of this tournament. Does that mean we think you should get rid of your cynic hat? No, no, no. Keep your cynic hat. It looks fine on you. But consider shrinking it. People can and do manipulate their Fargo rating by using the secret formula. The secret is lose games that you wouldn't have otherwise lost. You probably have a slime ball in your community. Most people do. And for many reasons, it's not as straightforward and rewarding as many fear it is. Not only is this sandbagging thing not as big a deal as many fear it is, it tends to become an even smaller problem as ratings get more established in your area. One thing we recommend you do if you run tournaments that use Fargo ratings is require people who are entering tournaments that use Fargo ratings to be sharing their match history. We are prohibited by law from making this a default. 
But anyone who is entering a scotch doubles tournament or a handicap tournament or a cap tournament that's based upon Fargo ratings is not a casual user. Those players should have the featured version of, of the Fargo Rate mobile app and they should turn on the sharing. This will help in three ways. First, it prevents all the needless and wrong speculation about the shenanigans other people are playing. It allows other players, other entrants, to monitor what's going on. And finally, knowing those matches are being shared creates a disincentive for that slime ball in your community. So, was this 600 and under tournament a sandbaggers convention? No, that's too cynical.